Bob Martin, congratulations. You have won an award for, I mean, this beautiful book. This is your career, 30 years. It is, I'm afraid. Yeah, the heaviest book ever to win an award. <laughs> you need a big coffee table. You, you do, yes. Yeah. Some people have put legs on that book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does it encapsulate your career in the way you wanted it to? Um, totally. I mean, um, the publishers let me more or less do it my way, and um, it's all my best pictures. You know, there's nothing missing from it. It's not like I'm looking back and thinking page 34 should have been, <laughs> um, you know, such and such a frame. It is my best work, so I was delighted with it. And even now, after it's been out quite a while, I'm still delighted with it. So it's, um, it was a labour of love. We tried to publish it a few years ago and lost a sponsor and had to give up and then came back again and we finally got it done so it's pretty cool really from my point of view. And over the course of your career you've covered everything from what, summer Olympics, winter Olympics and even I was looking even elephant polo and horse racing on ice. I know. So I've explain been some, that I like one. the obscure sports, horse racing on ice particular favourite. <laughs> I mean that happens in the Engadine Valley which is next door to Samaritz. And they have um, three races each year in February. And um, it's just a pictorial fest. I mean, I've been back, I think, three times. The first time was the best, which is the one that's in the book. And I kept on going back to try and make it better and never <laughs> quite managed it. And it's, um, you think it's going to be awfully slippery, but it's not. It's, it's really horse racing on snow on ice, if that makes sense, because yeah. there's maybe six inches of snow on top of the ice. And it's just you know, pictorially perfect. You know, lovely tree background, mountains, etc., etc. So. Well, it's funny you talk about going back to get the perfect shot. I mean, do you feel you've taken, in your mind, the perfect sports photo? You never you feel ever? you do. You forever try to um, improve the shot you've taken. You know, when you, have, when you turn up at an event, even if you turned up at, sort of, I know what's a good example, um, Fulham versus Millwall, you start shooting and you try to improve the first shot you've taken. So you shoot fairly heavily to start with, and then you shoot less and less, but all you're doing the entire match is trying to take a better picture than the one you took to start with. So you're always aspiring to do better than the one you took. So if it doesn't matter where you are in the Olympics or, uh, you know, my kids playing rugby, it's you are trying to take a better picture than the one you've just taken. So you forever aspire to improve the picture you just took. And has sports photography got easier in the digital age? Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> Most people think it has. I mean, the modern camera is incredibly technologically clever. It's got auto exposure, auto uh, focus, you know, digital, et cetera, et cetera. So everything's got easier technically. But when I first started, a good sports photographer was somebody who had mastered the long lens, who could manually focus with the subject as they ran towards you. So you're more of a technician than a photographer. So now that the cameras have come along and technologically helped us. And I certainly wouldn't be a sports photographer now if it was the old cameras, because my eyes dis, you know, stopped being really good at about 28. <laughs> so I'm still here working at a reasonable level because of the technology the cameras give you. But equally, it's meant that you become more of a photographer in that I can capture Linford Christie running towards me with both feet off the ground, every time I pick the camera up now, whereas back in the um, 90s, that was something special. And you, you might know. have had just like four exposures yeah, to play with. I might something. have just one of him with both of his feet off the ground. Now everyone who runs around the corner have got <laughs> both their feet off the ground, they're filling the frame, you know, so that's what the technology's brought you. So it means you don't just have to capture the action, you have to capture it aesthetically, you have to capture it with sense of place, your pictures must stand out, they must stand alone on a page. Yeah. So I think the technology has helped sports photography become more of an art as traditional photography is mm. and it's helped me become more of a, a photographer and I'm not totally worried about the technical side and I can think more about just what I'm photographing. And is there in this tome one mm. particular photo which is your personal favourite or is that too uh, difficult? Um, there should be I suppose. Um, the most successful picture in there is the one of Xavier Torres, the disabled swimmer at the Athens Olympics, um, shot from above where he left his legs behind against the chair and he's diving in, looking directly from above. Um, that won me World Press Photo of the Year and it also was in a portfolio that helped, win, helped me win Sports Photographer of the Year that year. So it's a 
fantastic picture for me and it's won more awards than any other picture. So that's perhaps my favourite picture. Well, you've got another award now to, to add yes. to the, those you've yeah. won already. Bob yeah. Martin, congratulations Thank on you the very award. Much well indeed. done. Yeah. <laughs>